When most people think about Moab, Utah, they probably think of this. Or this. Or even this. Well, as long as they aren't afraid of heights. But in the coming months, this slice of southern Utah could be known for something else, as the place that restored the balance to how we use and manage our public lands. Consider this your call to action. You see, a few years ago, Moab was at the center of one of the nation's biggest ever fights over where oil and gas companies should be allowed to drill and where they shouldn't. It was a firestorm. Arrests, lawsuits, a huge controversy. In response, the Obama administration ordered a series of reforms to the oil and gas leasing process. Today, those reforms are nearing completion, and Moab is an early test. If done right, what happens here could serve as a national model for where we drill and where we play for generations to come. We're at Indian Creek in southern Utah, right on the doorstep of the Needles District of Canyonlands. There's thousands of opportunities here, thousands of different kinds of climbs, and it's also a very low impact style of climbing, and it's found nowhere else in the world. Jason Keith first came to southern Utah in 1983 for its crack climbing. He wasn't alone. People travel from all over the world to experience the region's stunning landscapes, pumping millions into the local economy. But now, Keith is worried that the viewshed that makes the region so attractive to climbers and other recreationists could soon be compromised. This place could see drilling. If this area turns into an industrial site, um, people will start going elsewhere. In Moab, and some other areas of the West, the drive to produce more domestic oil and gas has put other uses of public lands, like recreation, at risk. You see, America's public lands belong to all of us, and they're open to many uses, from rock climbing, to hiking and fishing, to, yes, energy extraction. The federal agency that oversees these lands, the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, is required by law to strike a balance among those uses so that our lands stay healthy. But in the last decade and a half, with a record oil and gas boom across the country, things have fallen out of balance on public lands. The scales have tilted in favor of energy extraction. A big part of the problem comes from the outdated way the federal government decides where oil and gas drilling should happen. The way it often works is oil and gas companies get first dibs on choosing where they want to drill. Instead of looking at the big picture, the BLM okays these leases on a case-by-case -case basis. Without a master plan, oil and gas wells can quickly overwhelm the landscape and crowd out other uses. That's why you see so many lawsuits. Right here in Arches National Park, if the oil folks have their ways, we'll be looking at oil rigs from these high ridge lines out here. I think that's a big deal. There are things called view sheds, and they're an important part of our national park experience. That's why things blew up here a few years ago. The BLM, at the direction of the George W. Bush administration, auctioned off the rights to drill prime land for recreating not too far from Moab. One of the parcels the administration wanted to sell for drilling would have been visible from Delicate Arch, the iconic landmark featured on the state's license plate. Local opposition was swift. They sold 77 oil and gas leases in places that people felt were highly inappropriate. So when the Obama administration came into office, they took a look at what had happened here and decided to implement some oil and gas leasing reforms. The heart of those reforms is something called a master leasing plan. Here's what it boils down to. Instead of the old piecemeal approach that favored drilling, the BLM will take a broader look early on and develop a plan that outlines which areas of public lands are appropriate for development and which aren't. It's happening here in Moab and all over the West right now. And if done right, those big battles between oil and gas and recreational users could be less frequent. It's that simple. Nobody wants to live in an industrial area. Nobody wants to recreate in an industrial area. So the master leasing plan gives us the opportunity to figure out what zones, where the resource extraction should be, where the oil and gas development should be, and where the bike trails should be. Ashley Korenblatt runs a cycling business here in Moab that depends on the thousands of tourists who visit each year. 
But she remembers a time not too long ago when the Moab region's economy was based solely on uranium mining and how quickly the community was devastated when the industry went bust. When you compare the revenue streams that come from oil and gas to the revenue streams that come from recreation, we get to use the infinite side. There's no reason to think that that would stop. So a place like Moab, which is really blessed with this incredible landscape and these amazing recreation assets, it seems a little crazy to throw that away on a short-term play. The threat is not abstract. All around the area, new well pumps pop up seemingly overnight. Massive oil trucks drive the same roads that lead to national and state parks. Construction of a new pipeline started last summer. And to top it all off, the region is rich in potash, a form of potassium used in fertilizer. The Moab Master Leasing Plan is coming together right now in the offices of the state's BLM headquarters in Salt Lake City. Juan Palma is the man in charge. Yeah, we're going to take into account many aspects during the MLP process, and certainly recreation is one of those pieces that is really critical for the Moab area. The economy relies heavily on that uh, visitors are coming from all over the world. Palma says his team will deliver their final decision on the master leasing plan later this year. The stakes are high. The plan's success or failure at properly managing where we drill and where we play will likely be a model for the rest of the country. For the sake of our truly special places, we'll all be watching to make sure they get it right. We're in the 21st century and it's time to, to bring the BLM into a more modern era and treading more softly on the land. It has taken eons of time to create this magnificent environment that we all enjoy. And so we need to be very thoughtful, very meditative about what are the kinds of things that we do on this landscape. The master leasing plan allows us to get the resources that exist in our county to develop those resources and control that development while simultaneously protecting the Picassos, the unique in the world terrain that we have here in Moab.